From burnt out biomedical engineer to a thriving health coach, what has someone do that, uh, create the life of her dreams and make an incredible healing difference in the world? I am so excited to have you step into the world of the incredible Grace Loney. Grace, welcome. Hi, so great to be here. I'm honored. I I just love your story. I love when people come from these logical, like biomedical engineer tech industry uh, worlds, and then we're in this holistic uh, healing world. And it's like, you know, take us through the journey from one to the other, but also dive into like the work that you get to do now uh, and, 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 the difference that you're making in people's lives. I talk about the soul satisfying practice and, and how it feels so good to be able to do that. But on the way, uh, there's a lot of steps along the way to get you from point A to point B. So tell us a little bit about uh, yourself. I always say nobody uh, you know, grows up wanting to become a health coach. This is a brand new uh, area and field. So what Tell us a little bit about where you were at before. What was life like before you were a health coach? Tell us a little bit about that world. Yeah, great question. I love sharing this story. So yeah, you're right. I started my adult life working as a biomedical engineer in the fast-paced tech industry. Um, and I was trying to climb the corporate ladder. I was in lots of leadership programs, you know, grinding out long hours. My schedule was always packed and my ambitions were just sky high all the time. Um, I was also working on my evening MBA at night and I was working part-time as a fitness instructor. So talk about your time not being balanced and just go, 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 go. And I really didn't have the time to look after my health. So eventually this go, go, go and stress ridden lifestyle finally caught up with me and I broke out in a full body painful rash for six weeks. I mean, I like could not even sleep. It was so bad and the doctors couldn't figure out what had caused it. And eventually they just chalked it up to, oh, it's just stress. And I just kind of had to deal with it. Um, while the rash was subsiding, I realized I'm super fatigued. I'm sleeping like 12 plus hours per night. I'm dragging myself out of bed. I would not wake up if I didn't set an alarm or five alarms. Um, and I was also going to bed completely wired and then waking up totally exhausted and depleted. Like no amount of sleep was helping me. Um, and I was also exercising religiously, right? I was this fitness instructor. I was always moving. And I always still held on to this extra weight, especially in my belly region. Um, and I also just looked inflamed and just looked puffy all the time. So something was off and I didn't feel like me, right? I mean, it affected my career. I never wanted to get out of bed and show up for work. I had nothing to give. I felt like I was just dragging myself through the day. Um, it affected my relationships, right? I was completely depleted. I had really nothing to offer friends and family. I had to just sleep and take care of myself. Um, so finally, I had asked my doctor for a specific test to test for Hashimoto's thyroiditis because I had recently learned that it ran in my family's genetics. Mm -hmm. So um, it came back positive um, and uh, realized that all of these symptoms were the result of suffering from this autoimmune condition. So I had some answers um, and I was sent immediately to my endocrinologist who told me, OK, you just need to take this medication every single day for the rest of your life. And I was like, whoa, I mean, I was only 29 at the time. And I'm I'm thinking I'm healthy, I'm a, a fitness instructor, and now you want me to be on medication every single day for the rest of my life? Like what? So yeah. little red flags inside my brain went off and I was like, whoa, 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 let's slow down here. Um, let me see if I can work with my body, work with some lifestyle habits, work with my stress, right? Work, I've heard about going gluten-free. Let me try some things first before we go down this path. Um, so I basically left that doctor's appointment. I read every single book on Hashimoto's and autoimmune disease I could get my hands on. I listened to countless hours of podcasts on this topic. I went to three different naturopathic doctors to try to heal this naturally. Mm -hmm. Um, and one doctor even put me on this insane elimination diet for 
uh, 16 weeks and I could basically just eat meat and vegetables and nothing else at that time. Um, and then I was also still just exercising like crazy to try to get rid of this excess weight. Um, and it wasn't until I finally went on to get certified as an integrative nutrition health coach that all the dots started to connect for me and I finally felt relief. So from then I've just poured myself into the holistic Hashimoto's healing since my diagnosis. And I've truly learned how powerful nutrition, mindset, stress management, self-care, lifestyle habits, right? All of that, how important they are to truly healing the thyroid and the body naturally. And I'm happy to say to this day, I have never had to go on thyroid medication. I know that's not the story for everyone, but I feel excited to share that. Um, and I even got pregnant naturally and being hypothyroid can be really hard to get pregnant and also really dangerous if you're pregnant while you're hypothyroid. So I had a beautiful pregnancy. My daughter's three now. She is as vibrant as ever. Um, and today I continue to use food as medicine. Um, I have never experienced that painful rash ever again. I wake up with energy. I'm excited for my career. I'm excited to take on the day. Um, but I also have the confidence to balance that busy body and that go, go, go with the downtime and self-care that I really need. Um, I now have more mental clarity where I can juggle owning a business and being a mom. Um, and I just feel more confident in my body and my wellness. And it's the best part is I get to pass this down to that beautiful little girl. Um, so I just, I just love what I'm doing now, but yeah, it's been quite a journey to get here. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah. So really you were burning the candle at both ends. Uh, it took a toll on your health. You had to take matters into your own hands, even, even nudging them to do the tests in the first place, maybe a little divine intervention that you had family members kind of going through it. So it, it was in your awareness and then really taking matters into your own hands. What had you um, go to uh, an integrative, you know, become an integrative nutrition health coach? Was it so, was the reason you went for your own health or were you looking to switch careers or was it a both or what, tell me a bit about that. Yeah, that's a really good question. I, I, I think it was a bit of both because I really, like I said, I, I really poured myself into the holistic Hashimoto's healing lifestyle. So I wanted to know more for myself, but I knew that the career that I was in, that career path that I was on was not something I was passionate about. Like my heart just wasn't there. And I think that was adding to a lot of my stress and fatigue and just lack of passion. And I'm a very passionate person. Like I need to love what I'm doing to feel like myself. So in this journey of feeling like myself again, because I went from feeling like a shell of a human being to now feeling like grace again, I was exploring the path of, okay, how do I become in this wellness world? Like, what does that look like for me? And that was really the first step. And that's where everything just started to come together. And I just felt so good. Yeah. Cause I was, I was, you know, as you're sharing your story and it's like, you're grinding it out, you know, doing your job, long hours, it's crazy. And then you, you know, you get your MBA and then, well, that's not enough. Let, let's work part-time as a fitness instructor. Like, well, like, like your, your plate is already full, like, you know, not just joining the class, but, but doing, teaching the class. And I, I get that. And other women that were, you know, talking to, they, some of them might be these overachievers as well. Uh, someone used to talk to me about uh, the do more philosophy, the philosophy, those who do more, do more. And, uh, so, you know, you just, just go, 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 but cause I was like that and working a hundred hours as a doctor and then also, you know, doing yoga teacher training and Ayurvedic training and following Deepak Chopra and going and becoming a health coach and like, and, and having four kids, like, I love it, but you know, what's the deal here? And, and I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you know, for me, and I think for a lot of women who do that is um, not because they like to be busy, uh, but because there's something they're missing and there's, there's an itch that's not being scratched. 
Mm -hmm. And so that lack of uh, fulfillment in your day job uh, led, you're like, eh, this is not it. It's paying the bills, but it's not it. And so that leads you to seeking. And there is that phase in a lot of people's like awakening journey that has them seeking. And that voracious, I remember there's a time that I never went anywhere without a stack of books. I mean, that was kind of like pre worldwide web that we have here, but like, I would just always have books. I'd be always reading and then listening. And then once podcasts came in and things like that, just like constantly like looking for it. And I can, I, I'm happy to say it's not, I mean, I still am an avid reader and, 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 you know, an information taker, but it's not that kind of that desperate search, you know, for meaning. <laughs> and it's not, and the truth is it's not out there it's in here. And I think that's one of the things that IIN does actually extremely well. Like it allows you to go with like, what resonates with you? What do you like bio individual? All of those concepts are so excellent uh, in that. So is, is that kind of why you're like, you know, I want to help people. And my best idea at the time as a better biomedical engineer is to be a fitness instructor. Cause like, you know, is that, was that kind of the reasoning for that or tell me how that happened? Yeah. So I think, um, and I have so many thoughts based on what you just said too, because I know you get it. Like I, I came from a very lucrative six figure career. I was already making six figures in my like mid twenties. That's pretty great. Right. Like I had thought I had found success. Like, oh, this is it. This is what everyone told me that was going to equal happiness. Right. Study hard, get it, get a good degree, get a good job. You're set for life. So why am I so miserable and why am I sick and why do I have this autoimmune disease? Right. And so, yeah, it, it like to have to walk away from that comfort and that dream that I used to have for myself and totally shift gears and like jump into the deep end and be like, I'm just going to switch my whole life and become a health coach. I mean, that was big. That was big. Um, so, yeah. And I know you appreciate that. And um, yeah, I think the fitness piece of this was I've always been an athlete my whole life. I grew up doing gymnastics. Um, I did collegiate diving in college. I was a state champion. So like I have always had fitness as a part of my life, um, especially I, I think it helped me study well and manage anxiety. Um, so I was just really good at working out. And so I was actually approached like, hey, would you ever want to teach? And I was like, yeah. I would. So it was, it was my first invitation. Like someone saw something in me that I could add value in this area of life. And I welcomed that invitation, even though my plate was already full. I was like, oh my gosh, I think this is, this feels really good. Right. Okay. Even though I was still kind of burning myself out in the process. So it was close, but it wasn't quite there yet. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. A lot of people can probably resonate with it. It's like, I'm doing it because this feels fun. And, you know, to be able to do work you love with, you know, with who you want, when you want, how you want, where you want, it, it's an incredible feeling. Um, and like you, you know, working really hard to get to the top of the ladder and then only to look around and like, oops, wrong, wrong building, wrong mountain. <laughs> Got to go back down and start again. But it's all, you know, it's all part of that learning. And had you not had the health challenges, uh, you wouldn't be able to help people in the incredibly deep, transformative, amazing, life-changing way that you do now. So who, who is it that you help now? Now, what is it that you do? Yeah. Yeah. So I help women in tech with Hashimoto's lose weight, reboot their energy, overcome stress and revive passion in their career and their life. I love it. I love it. So what do you love most about uh, being a health coach and helping these people now? Yeah. Yeah. I have always been just a very bubbly, cheerleadery person. So what I love best about it is just being able to celebrate wins with my clients. Yeah. It's just, it's so much fun. The the small wins where it's like, okay, you you drank your water goal this week, or you ate the amount of protein you wanted to eat this week. Yeah, that's awesome. Or maybe it's a big goal, like, oh my gosh, I improved my blood work. Like my thyroid panel is now within normal ranges. I've reduced my antibodies. I've reduced inflammation. I've lost 20 pounds, right? 
I've gone off of all medications or my antidepressants, right? Like the big ones, those are like, those still blow my mind every time. And that, that is what makes it so fun and exciting is it's because it surprises me every time. Like, oh my gosh, this works, this works, this works. This is so good. I love that. I love that. It's um, an incredible relationship that you get to have with your client. It's really um, special. And the great thing is you don't have to work with anybody. Like you get to work with who you want to work with. Like as a doctor, I, you know, you have a patient, you got to help them whether you like it or not, whether you want it or not, whether they want it or not. Uh, That's, it's like a forced, uh, forced marriage. (laughs) Uh, But uh, in, in this world, you can just, you, you're only working people with people that you want to help and who want your help. And gosh, that just makes it so much better when everybody is like there because they want to be there and Mm -hmm. for the common purpose. And there's so much that can happen. And, and then when you get to work with a lot of people to start to make a lot of difference in the world, but you start to see patterns emerging and, uh, And there's a lot of learning that the coach has in that whole experience as well. What are some things that you've learned from working with your clients? Yeah. Yeah. I think the biggest thing and what I am still working on is because I know so much about Hashimoto's and autoimmune disease and like I've been through it, right? Like I've been through the journey. So I know the steps, I know what to do, but at the end of the day, what I have learned is that an empowered client is the healthiest client. So helping them realize that they are the expert in their own body. I don't need to feed them the answers. I'm there for support when they feel stuck, but it's really helping them tap into that self-empowerment, self-efficacy so that they can tune into their own bodies and listen to what their body needs. Like they are the expert on their body, not me, not even their doctor. Um, Right. So really just helping each person uniquely tap into their own symptoms, their own body, and like really treating them as like, it's a customized approach for everyone. Like I have a system, but it's, it has to be customized for everyone because it's, it's unique to them. Love it. Love it. So you are an amazing coach and have an incredible background as we've, as we've heard, and you help people with Hashimoto's what is the biggest myth that people have when it comes to addressing their thyroid health? Yeah. Yeah. This one um, is huge. So I think the biggest myth is that, um, that you have to be on medication when you have Hashimoto's and that's the only treatment. Like that's the only option for people. And sadly, a lot of people are led to believe that that's the only option. Um, But thyroid replacement um, you know, it that thyroid replacement medication, it might be essential for some people. It might help people alleviate some symptoms, but it really doesn't address the root cause of the autoimmunity that's going on in the body, right? It's like Hashimoto's is complex. It not only affects your thyroid, but it's about your immune system function. It's about your gut health. Um, it's about inflammation. So there's a lot going on underneath the surface. It's not just thyroid hormone at play here. Um, So, you know, really to effectively manage any autoimmune condition, but Hashimoto's especially, you need a comprehensive approach to really get at that root cause. So medication might be a useful tool, but underneath we want to be healing the body and really get to the root. So addressing gut health, helping to manage stress, stress. I've heard you say this all the time, Dr. Chana, stress has veto power over everything. So we've got to get a handle on the stress, Um, you know, uh, customized nutrition for each person. So figuring out what foods are inflammatory to you and what foods are anti-inflammatory to you and really focusing on those to really help heal and seal that gut. Um, and then also reducing toxic exposure and upregulating your body's own natural detox pathways. This is huge when it comes to inflammation. Like we are bombarded by toxins in our modern world. So really figuring that piece out. And then of course, other lifestyle changes like exercise and other healthy habits. Um, so they just, all of these things, they're, they're a whole piece to this puzzle and each piece is super important and medication doesn't have to be like the only solution. Yeah, that's really great. I think that's really helpful for people 
um, to know that there are options and to know that they have the power within themselves to alter the trajectory of their health. Like their choices really matter. What they eat, what they drink, what they, you know, what they stress over, uh, what they expose themselves to uh, makes a difference. And uh, I think more and more people are coming to realize that, that there are foods that they eat that are making them sick. There are foods that they eat that are contributing to their healing. And then the tricky part is, uh, they're not sure which ones are which. As they go out there, there's conflicting information. Eat this, don't do that, eat, you know, do this. And it can be very confusing. And that's really where you come in is kind of working with them because there's more than one right answer. You know, it's just not, it's not cookie cutter. Like, as you said, like it's, it's customized so that it, it, otherwise we just tell you, well, here's the food that you should eat, but that, that's not true for everybody. So mm. you have to kind of listen and your body will tell you, um, you know, Hey, I like this, this is working really well. Um, and then if like, for example, I used to get sick with broccoli. Broccoli is a huge superfood. I used to talk about how healthy broccoli is, uh, right. all of the amazing health benefits. But if I'm doubled over in pain and breaking out in a, you know, cold sweat after having it, maybe it's not good for me at this time, but those things change too. I can have broccoli now, but there was a good 20 years when I couldn't. And even if it was just small amounts, it would just, it, so you got to listen to your body, heal it. Potentially the state of my gut health is better than it used to be. I know you talk a lot about gut health and how primary that is uh, to healing and how important that is. Um, so that's really uh, fantastic, uh, Grace. If you're listening to this and uh, you're wondering, well, what is it that I should be eating or, 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 you know, what is it that I might be inadvertently exposing myself to or uh, you know, this is all really great about the stress thing, but you know, take a look at my job. Of course I'm stressed. Well, well, we get it. Grace gets it. She was there. Um, and so, so how did she go from point A to point B? So if you would, if you have questions for her about any of these things, uh, just pop in the chat in the comment and at the end, we'll let you know how you can get in touch with her, um, and just ask her. But if you want to put it in the comments as well here, just while you're thinking of it, uh, feel free to go ahead and do that. And, um, and she'll get back to you, you know, she, she will, uh, will do that more again, we'll let you know how to reach out to her. Um, so how have you grown as a person through the process of becoming a health coach? Like, um, obviously you, you went from being burnt out to, you know, being a mom and having this wonderful lifestyle. Like I see you on zooms and your daughter comes in she's the sweetest thing um and and things are much better like you are able to spend time with your daughter so this kind of career change came mm -hmm. to you at like the perfect time because if you were like doing grinding it out with the long hours you wouldn't be able to do all the things that you do with like now right so what mm -hmm. is tell us a little bit about you know what's improved for you personally, professionally, however you want to say it, uh, through this course of becoming a health coach? Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, having time with my daughter is something I didn't, I didn't even know at the time when I left my corporate career. So I left in December of 2019 and then um, opened my health coaching business in January of 2020. Pandemic hits, right, in March, and then I find out I'm pregnant in April. So that whole year was such a whirlwind, but it's such a blessing. You're so right that I like wasn't chained to my computer or my desk or this corporate career. And I had the space to enjoy my pregnancy and, and enjoy my daughter's first years. Like it's so precious. Um, but I think really like, I just feel so much more fulfilled. I feel like I have a purpose. I feel like I'm aligned with my purpose and Hey, like, I do get it. I I was in a really stressful career for me. Working in tech is super stressful. And so um, my, that's why I want to give back. That's why I want to help women in tech because just because that wasn't my purpose in life doesn't mean it's not yours. And I want to help you feel your best so that you can do what you love. 
right? And so, and I think women in tech is just amazing. Like there should be more women, like we should run the world, right? So um, that is why I'm so passionate about that. And I, I really do have that deep purpose and that deep why behind why I'm doing it. So um, yeah, that piece is huge. And then it's also just super fun for me because my job is literally helping people be healthier. And in the process, I get to be a healthier version of myself too. When I'm talking to clients and and I'm you know coaching them maybe through meditation or stress management or their nutrition, I'm like, oh yeah, note to self, Grace, maybe you should <laughs> meditate more. So it's it's I get the constant reminders and accountability to to up my game in in my own wellness practice and really nourish my body on a deeper level. So um, I literally like get paid to just be the healthiest, best version of myself. I, I don't know if you can get better than that. <laughs> I love it. I agree. I mean, it is, it's a phenomenal opportunity. And, and if those of you who are listening, who are like, man, I'm burnt out in my career and I know I'm meant for more. Like, I know there's a calling on my heart. Like I want to help people in a way that I don't have to sacrifice my own health or, or my wealth, um, that I can make a healing difference and still be there for my family. And you're like, but I don't know how to do that. Um, there'll be a video in the description below of the five critical pieces to create a successful health coaching practice. Uh, check that out. It's a free training and it just kind of goes through what I've learned, what I've taught and shared um, that are like the absolute base. It took me a long time to figure out what those five pieces are. But now once you have the answer, it's like, oh, OK, I got it. Uh, so definitely check that out. Um, Do you it. You won't regret yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's changed your life, right? It's been yeah. life changing. I know for you, Grace. Uh, you, you know, and for those you've been able to help, like it's it's a game changer. It is a game changer. Uh, and we're gonna talk more about, um, you know, in an in another episode, more about that and the details of your practice and and how exactly you're able to do that. So we'll we'll maybe put a link to that or you know follow me on. Uh, my YouTube channel, if if uh, Dr. Shauna, if you're looking for, uh, uh, you know, how do you do that? And I'm happy to help you with that. Uh, if you had to go back and talk to your former self, um, what would you say? Like, what what piece of advice would you give to uh, Grace? And you can pick any time, either your childhood self or your burnt out, you know, stressed out self. Uh, what would you say? Yeah, I. So I'm, I'm still working on this advice. I'm still trying to take my own advice. So I've just, that is the whole caveat. I'll probably, this will probably be a lifelong lesson for me, but um, like transitioning from that go, 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 push, 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 like, you know, like always striving for more. It's like just surrendering and allowing and knowing that it's all in divine timing. Like the universe has your back. You've got this. I mean, um, like you showed up in my life for a reason. IIN showed up in my life for a reason. Hashimoto showed up in my life for a reason. You know, I left my corporate career and boom, I got pregnant. Like it's it. When you look back on everything, you're like, oh, everything was working out for me. I didn't have to push so hard and try to like be on this certain timeline because it's all working out. Like, you know, you put yourself, you have good intentions, you have a good heart and you work hard. It's it's going to work out. So um, yeah, just maybe relaxing more and just having more fun on the journey, you know, enjoying the journey rather than being so worried about timelines or successes or whatever. Right. Yeah. I love that. It, it, <clears throat> when we're, and we've all been, when people call it dark night of the soul, your rock bottom moment, the, all of those things. And when you're in it, it feels so awful. And it can be pretty easy to say, why is this happening to me? Like why? And we kind of get into that victimhood because it sure seems like life's beaten up on you pretty bad. And so why is this happening to me? And then, you know, 2020 hindsight, or as I say, if you take the bounce, like like you get the rock bottom, but don't stay there. Take the bounce because it's you you bounce higher than where you were. And mm -hmm. then you're like, hey, that was all happening for me because if it hadn't happened for that bounce that I took. Um, I wouldn't be in this great state. You wouldn't have this incredible career, incredible lifestyle, incredible income, incredible healing difference that you're making. You wouldn't have that 
had you not had the bounce. So then you realize, oh, this was all happening for me. And there's actually mm-hmm. another level. I think there's always another level. And that's when you realize, actually, it's all happening through me. Like mm-hmm. I am just the messenger and I'm being placed in front of the people that I can serve. And likewise, I'm being placed in the people that you know I can serve. And And some of the people who are watching this this is that moment for them when they're like, that's like, wow, there's someone who can help me. And that person pops up at just the right time. That book, that podcast, that video, that introduction, that purpose, that person who asked you, Hey, would you like to teach a, would you like to teach a fitness class? Um, Mm -hmm. And, and that is just the little seeds that are planted. And they're like, yeah, actually I would that, you know, heart check that feels good that that aligns. And mm-hmm. so I think um, that that's really that next level. It's like, we're just, I always say, uh, come along quietly and no one gets hurt. Like when you're, when you have a calling, when you're called to do something, it's such a weird word. I didn't really understand what the word calling meant. Like I seriously didn't understand what the word calling meant. I, I looked it up. Uh, so when I was going for my medical school interviews, so you have to, you, you do the, you know, eight hour exam, MCAT exam, you do all these things. You got, you, there's a lot of hoops to jump through to get into medical school. And then one of those was a live interview and, and some of the answers people were giving were that it was a calling to be a doctor. Hmm. I'm like, what does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? I didn't really understand what they meant by that as my younger, you know, 20 something self. Like, I didn't understand what they meant. And now I so understand what they meant. Uh, You know, there's a calling on my heart. There's a, there's a reason I am here and we have to go through some of these pieces to become who we are today. And and that's for all of us. And we're all here for a, a reason. Like if we weren't here, um, if, if, if we didn't have a reason to be here, we wouldn't. <laughs> so we all play an important role. Um, and just you existing plays an important role in this story because somebody can learn from you, with you, through you. And we are playing this co-creative dance. When I was in my 25 year medical career and it was super stressful and super toxic and and I was super burnt out um although monetarily super successful and my patients were happy that I was there uh but it was not it it wasn't it um it was a stepping stone to it what I do now but it wasn't it so kind of like your MBA or my, my biomedical engineer uh, it was in tech because you you help lots of women in tech because you know that world. Um, it's a stepping stone, and I remember when I was trying to create my health coaching practice um, while I was a medical doctor, and I couldn't do it. Like I like I knew how the body. I knew the body. I could help people if I got someone in front of me. I can help them be healthy. Like that part I had down. But how do I get the person in front of me? That part I didn't know because at the hospital, I didn't have that problem. I had a lineup of months and months and months of of patients waiting to see me, but I couldn't figure out how do I get that person in front of me so that I could help them. And Mm -hmm. um, so I'm like, I can't do this. Like, I can't do this because I don't have clients. I could do it, but I don't have clients. So never mind. Never mind. I'll just do this toxic, high income producing, you know, subspecialty radiologist job that I have for how long, how many more minutes before I can retire? Like how, how much longer do I have to do this? Um, Mm -hmm. I'll just do that because I can't do this job that I think I would like. I think it would feel really meaningful and purposeful and loving and like, you know, I can't do it. So I'm going to quit. Well, what I learned is you can't quit on your calling you can't like it the, the, the universe will literally smoke you out like it was becoming ridiculous we would have uh an overhead vent uh in our um reading room at the radiologist uh reading room 
and there was cigarette smoke coming down over my head. Like it was crazy because people who were smoking outside the hospital, it was coming through the vents and literally over my head. Uh, so like just things kept going from like bad to ridiculously worse. And it was like, it's like I'm getting hit over the head with a sledgehammer, like, like go, <laughs> go, you know, like it's time to go. But I know how hard it is to leave you had a six figure career. I know how hard it is to leave. Uh, and so yeah. did I, that career it's scary. Income and stability of that to go out and do this crazy thing of helping people be healthy with their health. Um, but the people that you serve, it's so rewarding. It's so beneficial. Your life is better, uh, you know, financially better, uh, physically better, spiritually better, emotionally better, and your family's life and your client's life. And it's a win, win, win all the way around. But through mm -hmm. that growth process, when you're going through the birth canal, it can be a little bit crazy as you're birthing your, your new practice and your new business, but you've certainly done that. And you've got uh, just you know, just such an amazing practice. And, and, you know, give some examples of people that you've helped, you know, maybe they come to you for one thing. I mean, weight loss is something that people, weight gain is something that people with Hashimoto's in particular struggle with. So weight mm -hmm. loss is something that people often come for help with. Um, but let's say, it, it, I mean, whatever they came with, but they came with one problem, but you and I both know when you get to the root cause, as you were sharing earlier, um, and you undo the inflammation and you detox their, you know, they detox their things that they didn't even realize were like sabotaging them. And you mm -hmm. install those new healthy, easy to do, but easy not to do, but easy to do habits that everything changes and their whole world changes. So, and then they get all of these, instead of side effects, spin-off benefits, Tell us, you know, one or two stories about people that you've helped where, yeah, you went after one thing, but what they got were so many more blessings. Yeah. Yeah. I have a really good example of this, maybe two. So um, I was working with one woman. She came to me. She's like, I have Hashimoto's. I can't lose weight no matter what I do. Um, she also had some really intense GI symptoms. I, you know, we do a baseline assessment right at the beginning, like on a scale of one to 10, how bad are your GI symptoms? And she was a one. So like, you one know, being bad. one being bad. one being the worst. Yeah. yeah. Like terrible. Yeah. Um, probably would have ranked it a zero if she could have. Um, and so we worked together, um, for over the course of a couple months and just in, uh, like nine weeks, we had completely reversed her gut symptoms. She of course was able to lose weight easily. And then she messaged me towards the end of our work together. And she's like, Oh, I forgot to tell you. Um, I've been working with my doctor to get off my antidepressant because I've just been feeling so good. I don't think I need it anymore. And I was like, girl, I didn't even know you were on an antidepressant. <laughs> like, you know, and we don't have, we don't have to know that. We just know right. that the process works. Yeah. Um, and then she, she had messaged me, um, a month later, a month or two later. And she's like, oh, I'm, by the way, I'm completely off my antidepressant. I feel great. Like, you know, it not only helped with the weight loss, the gut issues, but it helped with her mood, her anxiety, her stress, the mindset, like all of it. Um, we're, we're magical little magicians, us creatures, but, um, another story very similar to this, um, a woman came to me, uh, I had posted my story on Facebook and talked about all my, you know, mysterious symptoms before I knew I had Hashimoto's and she's like, Ooh, I have all of that going on. So we ended up working together. Um, her main, complaint was the weight loss resistance. Um, and so she was able to lose 15 pounds over just a few short months. Um, and the bonus benefit was that like, actually the biggest benefit wasn't even the weight loss for her. It was her anxiety because when she came to me, she could not even get in the car and drive her daughters down the street to dance class. Mm -hmm she, she couldn't do anything. Everything made her so anxious. And so her husband had to do like a lot of the things for the kids. Like she couldn't even get them on the bus in the morning because the timeline of them getting on the bus on time was too much for her. And she's like, oh my gosh, my anxiety is so amazing now. She's like, I took my daughters on a two hour car ride to an amusement park. We had the best day ever. I wasn't nervous. I wasn't anxious at all. And she just told me, she's like, oh, and I volunteered 
as a chaperone on my daughter's field trip. And this is something I've always dreamed of doing, but I never thought I'd be able to do. And she helped the kids navigate through these like really tight, constricted ice caves. And she was totally fine the whole time. Um, so this is just like, just really shows that empowering people and helping them step into the highest version of themselves so they can just live their best life. Like she's an amazing mom and now she can live authentically as that mom that she wants to be. I love that. I love that. It's, it's once their health is back, like they can be the mom they want to be. They can live the life that they can have the relationships they want to have. They can travel the way they want to do. They can actually live life when they're not being held hostage by, you know, an, uh, an ailing body. And it, and it, it feels awful to be sick. It just feels awful. And, um, to know that there are things that people can do and they might not like a lot of people don't know that they, there's anything that they can do. And so I just really commend you for leading with love and shining your light and showing people that it's possible. Um, that's really incredible. Uh, if people are listening and they're like, I can talk to this grace girl, uh, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I would love to get in touch with you. If, if you're someone that you're like, oh, wow, this really resonates with me. Um, I have a few free resources on my website. So it's www.gracefullyholistic.com spelt just as it sounds. Um, or you can give me a follow on Instagram, send me a DM and that's going to be at gracefully holistic. So pretty simple websites, gracefully holistic.com Instagram at gracefully holistic. Awesome. I love that. And if you're listening here and you resonate with her career change story and you're looking at how can I create a successful health coaching practice again, uh, check out that training. It's absolutely free. The five critical pieces you need to reach a thriving uh, health coaching practice. So with that, uh, I just thank you for being here and we'll see you on the next episode. Pop in the comments what you liked about it. Share it with a friend that could benefit either from their health perspective or their career perspective, uh, because we're all in this together. Be good for you.